Hi, my name is Shehroz Ahmed and uh, in this video we are going to discuss a topic of IB Math higher level and the topic that we are going to discuss is vectors. So let's start off. Let's start off from the basics of vectors. So let's suppose we have a parallelogram over here and uh, it has four vertices. So here's our parallelogram. This vertex is P. Over here we have Q. This is R and this is S. So the vector from P to Q is A and the vector from Q to R is B. Now what we have to do is we have to work out the vectors for different points on this parallelogram. But before that I want to let you know about the vectors. So vector is basically is used to represent the size and direction from one point to another. For example, if you have to go from P to Q, so this is the vector A that is representing the direction that the direction is over here. It could be like uh, northwest and this is the length of the vector. So this length could be, let's suppose if it's a force, then uh, you can take it as like 10 Newton is equal to this much length. All right, so this is how a vector represents the magnitude and the direction from one point to another. So let's do um, some, let, 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 let's find out some direction from one point to another. So from P to Q, we have already been given the um, vector that is A. Now, if you want to find out the direction from Q to P, Q to P, we'll start off from Q and we'll go on to P. So you see the vector from P to Q is A. But if we are going into the opposite direction, then the direction of the vector will become opposite and the vector will be like equal to negative a. So from p to q the vector will be a, from q to p that would be equal to negative a. Now let's see the vector from q to r. So the vector from q to r is positive b but the vector from r to q, so the vector r q will be equal to negative b. So if we go into the opposite direction there will be a negative sign with the direction of the vector. All right, now let's suppose we have to um, we have to find out the vector from P to R, from P to R. So in order to go from P to R, we have to find out the vector in terms of vectors A and B. So what we do is we'll first go from P to Q and then from Q we'll go to R. So the vector from P to Q is A, the direction, the direction is same. So I'll just keep, keep it as plus A. And from Q to R, I'll just add it up vector b. So this will be the vector from p to r. Now let's suppose we have to work out the vector from s to q. We have to start from the vertex s and we have to reach vertex q. So from s to q what we do is we will go from s to p. So you see qr is parallel to ps. So the vector from ps will also be equal to b. But over here we have to go from s to p first. So S to P will be in the opposite direction of B. So it will be like negative B. Now from here, we have to go from P to Q. So P to Q is positive A because the direction where we are going and the direction of the vector is same. So that would be equal to minus P plus A or we can just write it as A minus P. So this is how we can represent the direction of between two points by represent um, by the help of the vectors. So this is for the basic part. Now we will discuss about the scalar product and the angle between the two vectors. All right, so now we will have to discuss scalar product and the angle between the two vectors. For that purpose, uh, we, we, okay, uh, we also call the scalar product as the dot product. So I can write it as the dot product or the scalar product. These are the two names of uh, uh, this multiplication of the vectors. So let's suppose we have two vectors vector u that is equal to 3i plus 2j plus k and uh, vector v that is equal to 5i minus 4j minus 2k and we want to find out their scalar product or the dot product so it will be like this u dot v is equal to now the coefficient of unit vector i will be multiplied with the coefficient of unit vector i over here plus times minus will become minus. The coefficient of unit vector j will be multiplied with the coefficient of unit vector j. Then plus minus will become minus. Then the coefficient of unit vector k will be multiplied with the coefficient of unit vector k. So this is how we'll um, multiply them. 
So let's start off. So 3 times 5, that will be equal to 15. Okay, now when the unit vector i multiplies with i, it becomes equals to 1. i dot i is equal to 1 because unit vector has, and they have the same direction and their magnitude is equal to 1. So 1 times 1 with the same direction, the answer will be equal to 1. So that's why we don't uh, write the unit vectors. Now, 2 times negative 4. So that would be equal to negative 8. Then 1 time negative 2. That would be equal to negative 2. So u dot v will become equal to 15 minus 8 minus 2. That will be equal to 5. So the dot product of u and v or the scalar product is equal to 5. All right. Now let's suppose we have to find out the angle between these two vectors. So in order to work out the angle, we have to look for a formula that relates these vector with the angle. So the formula is u dot v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cos of theta. So this theta tells us about the angle between these two vectors. And uh, in order to find out the u magnitude, we have to use the formula for the magnitude. That's quite simple. So u magnitude will become equal to square root, the coefficient of i square, that will be equal to 3 square, plus the coefficient of j square, that would be equal to 2 square, plus the coefficient of k square, that will be equal to 1 square. So from here, we'll get the magnitude, so that would be equal to um, 9 plus 4 plus 1, so it will be equal to under root 13. In fact, it will be equal to under root 14. Similarly, we'll work out the magnitude of v. So I'll do the working over here. So the magnitude of V will become equal to square root of 5 square, that is 25, plus negative 4 square, that is 16, plus negative 2 square, that is 4. So that will become equal to under root 45. So this is the magnitude of vector V and under root 14 is the magnitude of vector U. So our cos of theta will become equal to u dot v divided by u magnitude times v magnitude and our theta will become equal to cos inverse this whole thing u dot v over u magnitude times v magnitude so as we have just found that u dot v is 5 so we will write it as cos inverse 5 over the magnitude of u that is under root 14 and the magnitude of v that is under 145. So we'll just put this value into the calculator and get the angle between the two vectors. So the answer will be 78.5 degrees. So this will be the angle between these two vectors. And this is the whole working that we can use to work out the angle between the two vectors. All right, so after the scalar or dot product, we have to see the vector product or the cross product of two vectors. All right, so let me just erase it. All right, so for the vector product or the cross product of two vectors, we'll consider the same vectors and now we'll try to work out their cross product or the vector product. So let's suppose vector u is equal to 3i plus 2j plus k and uh, the vector v is equal to 5i minus 4j minus 2k. So in order to find out u cross v, we have to write down the determinant of and we'll write i and j k in the first row over here we'll write 3 2 and 1 over here we'll write 5 like this 5 the coefficient of j over here and the coefficient of k over here now we'll work out its determinant and the determinant will give us the vector product the yeah the vector product of these two vectors so that would be equal to for this one, it will become i times this minus this. So this times this, that will be equal to 2 times minus 2 minus 1 times minus 4. Then I'll write plus j in bracket. I'll multiply these two, so like 3 times minus 2, that'll be equal to minus 6, minus 5 times 1, that'll be equal to 5. Then I'll write k in bracket, I will write it as um, 
3 times negative 4, that will be equal to negative 12, minus 5 times 2, that is equal to 10. So I'll just solve it and I'll get my vector. So 2 times minus 2, that will be equal to minus 4, minus 4, minus, minus 4, so that will be equal to 0. So it's i times 0 plus j times negative 6 times negative 5, that will be equal to negative 11, plus k times negative 22. So my final vector will become equal to 0i minus 11j minus 22k. And I can write it as negative 11j negative 22k. So this is how we can work out the vector product of uh, any two given vectors. Now the vector product gives us information about the area of the parallelogram. Okay, so if we have a parallelogram that has been formed by these two vectors. So let's suppose this is vector u and uh, this is vector v. And it has formed a parallelogram like this. Then in, in order to work out the area of this parallelogram, we can get the information from the answer of their cross product. So the area of this parallelogram will be equal to the magnitude of u cross v. So we will find out the magnitude of this vector and we will get the area of this parallelogram. And if you want to find, work out the triangle that has been formed due to these two vectors, we can just divide the area by two, the area, this area by two, and we'll get the area of this triangle. So this will give us the area of the parallelogram, and the formula half times u cross v gives us the area for the triangle. So this is the information that the vector product or the cross product of two vectors gives us. So after this one, we'll move to the next topic of vectors. All right, so the next topic that we have to cover in this uh, in vectors is the vector equation of a line. How can you find out the vector equation of a line? So vector equation is similar to the simple equation. So let's suppose we have been given two position vectors, OA and OB. And we have to find out the vector equation from these two position vectors. So let's suppose these two vectors are, OA is one, two, three, OB is, um, 5, 4, and negative 2. In order to find out the vector equation, we, we, we have to see the standard form of the vector equation. That is, r equals to a plus tb. Now, within these two, this is the, uh, within these two, we have to work out the direction vector, first of all. So this b is the direction vector. And this A is basically the coordinate. Coordinate means like you can take it as the y-intercept in the equation. And for the vectors, you can just say it's, it as um, OA. That's the initial coordinate. So we want to find out the vector equation from vector A to B. So this B will, give, will be equal to the vector AB. So I have to find out the value of B. So B is basically equals to vector AB. So vector AB will be equal to OB minus OA that will be equal to I'll just subtract them so OB is 5 4 minus 2 and OA is 1 2 3 so when I'll subtract them I'll get 4 2 and minus 5 so this is my direction vector that will be equal to B and this is my intercept vector that will be equal to A so I'll just put these values into this uh, vector equation and I'll get my answer. So if I have to write down my vector equation in the form of column vectors, then my answer will be equal to r equals to in place of a, I'll put this intercept vector that will be equal to 1, 2, 3 plus t times the direction vector that I have just found that that is representing the direction of the vector from point uh, from o from a to b. So that will be equal to t times 4, 2, negative 5. So that will be my vector equation. If I have to write down my vector equation in form of the unit vectors, then I can write it as like this r equals to i plus 2j plus 3k. That is my intercept vector like this one plus t times my direction vector that will be good. That is this one 4, 2 and negative 5. So it's like t times 4i plus 2j minus 5k. 
now I'll from here I'll make I'll simplify it further so for the unit vector I I will have 1 plus 40 plus for the unit vector J so over here I have 2 over here I have 2t so it'll become 2 plus 2t J for the unit vector K over here I have 3 but here I have minus 5t because all of these coefficients are being multiplied with t so it's like this will be 40 that i have written over here this will be 2t that i have written over here and this will be negative 5t that i'm going to write now so it will become 3 minus 5t of unit vector k so this will be my equation for the this will be my vector vector equation in form of the unit vectors all right so this is it for the vector equation of a line now we have been left with a small topic that is of uh, intersection of two vector lines so what will happen if the two vector lines intersect and we have to find out the coordinate at which they will intersect so let's see that topic now all right so the intersection of two vector lines so let's suppose we have two vector lines line l1 whose vector is r equals to negative 2 1 0 plus its direction is t times 3 2 1 this is line l1 and there's another line l2 whose vector equation is 1 minus 1 8 plus s times 1 2 and negative 2 remember because they are they both have different directions so that's why i have I have chosen the variable t for l1 and I have chosen the variable s for l2 so let's suppose l1 is going into this direction l2 is going into this direction and these two lines are intersecting at a point we have to find out the coordinates of this point so in order to work it out uh, let's start off its working so for that purpose I will write down my vector equation in terms of the unit vectors like i j and k then i'll compare my unit vectors and from there i'll work out my value of t or s then i'll sub resubstitute into the equation and get my coordinates so the vector equation for l1 will be equal to it's given now i'm going to write down the vector equation in terms of i j and k so it'll become minus 2 plus 3t i and from here it's like 1 plus 2t j and uh, from here it's like 0 plus t k so upon simplifying i'll get minus 2 plus 3t i plus 1 plus 2t j and t k so this is the vector equation for line l1 now let's see the vector equation for line l2 that will be equal to 1 plus s of i plus minus 1 plus 2s unit vector j plus 8 minus 2s with unit vector k now what i'll do is i'll compare their respective unit vectors i'll compare i with i j with j and k with k because the point where they are, in, they are intersecting the vectors has to be equal because they are sharing the same coordinate and i'll work out the value of uh, t or s and i'll reach to my answer so this negative 2 plus 3t will be equal to 1 plus s so i'll write it here negative 2 plus 3t is equal to 1 plus s this is equation 1 this 1 plus 2t will be equal to negative 1 plus 2s so I'll write 1 plus 2t equals to negative 1 plus 2s. This is my second equation. And for this one, I can write it as t equals to 8 minus 2s. That would be my third equation. So what I'll do is I'll substitute the value of t into any of the first and second equation and get the value of s. Then I substitute the value of s over here and get the coordinates. All right, so t is equal to 8 minus 2s, so I'll insert the value of t into second equation. So the second equation is, I'll do the working over here, 1 plus 2t equals to minus 1 plus 2s. 
So 1 plus 2 times, now t is 8 minus 2s. So I'll insert the value over here. Equals to negative 1 plus 2s. So like, it would be like 1 plus 16 minus 4s equals to minus 1 plus 2s. And um, it will become 17 minus 4s equals to minus 1 plus 2s. So that it will be like 17 plus 1 equals to 2s plus 4s. So it will become 18 equals to 6s and my s will become equal to 3. Now I'll substitute the value of s over here and get my x coordinate, y coordinate and z coordinate. So my x coordinate will become equal to 1 plus s that will be equal to 1 plus 3 that is equal to 4. The y coordinate will become equal to minus 1 plus 2s that will be equal to minus 1 times sorry minus 1 plus 6 because 2 times 3 is 6 so it will become 5 and my z coordinate will become equal to 8 minus 2s so that would be equal to 8 minus 6 that is equal to 2 so my final answer for the intersection of these two vector lines will be 4 comma 5 comma 2 so this will be the point where these two vector lines will intersect so in this way you can work out the intersection of the two vector lines so this is it now let's see some exam related questions and uh, let's move on to there all right so here we have an exam related question it says in the following diagram ca is equal to vector p like ca is equal to p so this is the direction cb is equal to q so c to b is q like this and ad is equal to half of ab so from a to d it's the half of ab of course because uh, these are the midpoint so these two lengths are equal now we have to express each of the following vectors in terms of p and q so we have to represent a to b so we have to start from a and end at b so there's no direct vector available from a to b so what we do is first of all we'll go from a to c and then we'll go from c to b so the vector from a b a to b will be equal to a c plus c b now a c is in the opposite direction of b so that will be equal to minus b plus now c b is as uh, is equal to q and the direction is same as well so it'll be equal to minus p plus q so vector a b will be equal to q minus p so this is our vector a b in terms of q and p p and q now we have to work out c d so we have to go from c to d so let's see which path can we take so we have two paths either we can go from c to a and then from a to d or we can go from c to b and then from b to d but before doing that we have to find out the vector of a to d or from b to d so i'll choose this path c to a and then a to d so as we know that a d is basically half of a b okay so we have the vector a b that is q minus p so vector a d will become equal to half of q minus p now we have to work out c d this is c d all right so we'll go from c to a then from a to d so c d will be equal to c a plus a d so c a will be equal to p plus from a to d we'll have this much half times q minus p so that will be equal to p plus half q minus half p so my final answer will become equal to half p minus half q and we can write it as 1 over 2 times p minus q so this is how i can work out my vectors my vector cd that was easier question now let's move on to some medium level question all right so let's see this question it says a line l1 passes through these two points a and b show that vector a b is equal to this much so in order to work out a b we will say that a b is equal to o b minus o a 
So this is the position vector of B and this is the position vector of A. So OB minus OA will be equal to 5 minus 5 minus 4. That's OB. OA is 2, 1 and minus 1. So when we'll subtract them, it'll be like 5 minus 2, that is 3. Minus 5 minus 1, that is 6. Minus 4 minus minus 1, that will be like minus 4 plus 1. So it will be equal to minus 3. So hence it is equal to a b that has been shown over here. So this is done. Okay, now in the next one it says write down the vector equation of L1 in the form r equals to b plus td. So this is basically the direction vector and uh, this one is the intercept vector. So the equation will become r equals to the intercept vector that is 2 1 negative 1 so I'll write it as 2 1 negative 1 plus t times the direction vector that is 3 minus 6 minus 3 that's it now over here it says align l2 has this equation find the acute angle between l1 and l2 so in order to work out the acute angle between these two lines we will take the ang we'll find out the angle between their direction vectors so this is the intercept vector and this is the direction vector over here this is the intercept vector and this one is the direction vector so we will find out the angle between their direction vectors so i'll say i'll keep i'll take this direction vector as u so for this one it's u equals to 3i minus 6j minus 3k and the direction vector from here will be equal to v that will be equal to minus 3i plus 4j plus 2k now we can find out the direction between them by using theta equals to cos inverse u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v so u dot v will become equal to 3 times minus 3 that will be equal to minus 9 minus 6 times positive 4 that will be equal to minus 24 and uh, minus 3 times minus 2 that will be equal to minus 6 so once we add them we'll get minus 39 and uh, the magnitude of vector u will be equal to square root 3 square that is 9 plus negative 6 square that is 36 plus negative 3 square that is also 9 so it'll become equal to 36 plus 9 plus 9 square root 54 and now in the same way we'll work out the magnitude of vector b so that will be equal to square root negative 3 square that will be equal to 9 plus 4 square that will be equal to 16 plus 2 square that will be equal to 4 so it will become equal to square root of 29 so we have all the values of u dot v the magnitude of u the magnitude of v and now we have to just insert it over here and work out the angle so my angle will become equal to cos inverse negative 39 divided by square root of 54 square root of 29 so once i'll put that into the calculator i'll get my angle equal to 170 degrees but in the question it says that we have to work out the acute angle so in order to work out the acute angle i'll just subtract it from 180 so my acute angle will be equal to 180 minus 170 that will be equal to 10 so the answer is 10 degrees for part B. Now in part C it says the lines L1 and L2 intersect at point C. So find out the position vector of OC. So let me just erase it and then we'll work out the position vector of OC. So in order to work out the position vector of uh, the intersection point, what we have to do is we have to compare these two lines. So line L1 was uh, R equals to 2 1 minus 1 plus t times 3 minus 6 minus 3 so I have to compare the unit vectors of line L1 with the unit vectors of line L2 so from here I'll get 2 plus 3t that is the unit vector in, in the direction of i equals to now from here I'll get 5 minus 3s so from here I'll get my first equation now let's compare the unit vector in, in the direction of j that is 1 minus 60 
equals to for this one it'll be like 5 plus 4s this is the second equation now for the third one that will become minus 1 minus 3t equals to now from here I'll get 1 plus 2s this is my third equation so from here I got my three equations now I have to work out either the value of R sorry either the value of T or S so I'll make any one I'll take any one equation make um, S or T as my subject substitute it in, into any other equation and work out my value of S or T so I'll choose equation number three and I'll make S as my subject all right so it'll be like negative one minus three T minus 1 whole divided by 2 equals to s so s will become equal to minus 2 minus 3t whole divided by 2 I'll substitute this value of s um, over here in equation number 2 and work out my value of t so equation number 2 is 1 minus 6t equals to 5 plus 4 s so s is minus 2 minus 3t whole divided by 2 this 2 will get cancelled with this one so I'll get 2 over here so 1 minus 6t equals to 5 plus 2 times negative 2 negative 3t and uh, then I will just solve it further so 1 minus 6t is equal to 5 minus 4 um, minus 60 so from here this will get cancelled and I'll get 1 equals to 1 so this will not give me the answer so I'll solve them I'll solve equation 1 and 2 I'll solve these two equations and we'll try to get my answer so let me just erase it all right so my equation 1 is 2 plus 3t equals to 5 minus 3s and uh, the other one is 1 minus 60 equals to 5 plus 4 s so what I'll do is I'll multiply this equation with 2 on both sides so th this equation will become 4 plus 60 equals to 10 minus 6 s now I'll just add these two equations so I'll get 60 get cancelled and on the left side I'll have 5 on the right side I'll have um, 15 minus 2 s so that 2 s will become equal to 15 minus 5 that will be equal to 10 so s will be equal to 5 I'll insert this value of s into any of the equation and work out my value of uh, t in fact I don't need to do that I just insert the value of s over here and get my uh, coordinates so I'll get my coordinates my x coordinate will be equal to 5 plus 5 minus 3s so it's like 5 minus 3s that would be equal to 5 minus 3 times 5 that would be equal to negative 10 my y coordinate of point C will be equal to 5 plus 4 s so that would be equal to 5 plus 4 times 5 that will be equal to 25 then my z coordinate will be equal to 1 plus 2 s that would be equal to 1 plus 2 times 5 so that will be equal to 11 so my vector OC will be negative 10 25 and 11 so this is the vector O. so let me just write it into the vector notation like into the column vector form so OC will become negative 10 25 11 this is my answer all right so this is it for this topic and uh, hope you liked the video so thank you so much